Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. I was not planning on filming today, but I knew I was planning a video and I really wanted to talk about Narrative Select as a culling software. Totally not sponsored. It's just something that I like to use and I wanted to share my experience, how I use it after a session or a wedding to cull through my images and get them ready to edit. But I wasn't going to film it today, but I did have a family session last night and I was getting ready to pull it all into narrative right now. I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to go ahead and share how I use narrative, kind of my review of it, so you can see if it would work for you in your photography or business. I have my warm beverage. My desk is a little bit of a mess because I have my camera bag, but you know we're rolling with it. I just backed the family session up to my external hard drive. So I have an external hard drive. You can kind of see it here. I believe it's like two terabytes of storage, which sounds like a lot, but if you're a wedding photographer, honestly, it's that's not that much. But I back everything off of my cards, so I put them all on an external hard drive. It's what I do after every session. I take everything off of the card and put it on the external hard drive because now I have it saved in two different places, all the raw images. So I already backed it up and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my screen recording. You can see here, I already took everything off of my, these, this is my card here and I put it onto my external hard drive here. So now I'm going to go ahead and open narrative select now that I have everything on my external hard drive and here you can see all the projects so I guess archived projects as well as active projects so I have some projects that are active right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and then you can choose a folder or drop it I choose the folder that's who I'm editing today and it does automatically pull in the folder's name, so if you wanted to rename it, you totally can, but you can automatically use the folder name as the project name, and that's what I'm gonna do. So this is Parents and Children, because it is a family session, and you see it already imported. Um, I'm gonna X out this wedding, because I did already do that. So it already imported all of the images, and we're gonna hit Grid View, or you can hit G on your keyboard here, and here is the grid view. You can see also right here in this top-ish corner, <laughs> it's sorting. So I kind of give it a minute um, because I like to sort by capture time and sometimes it just needs a minute because these were definitely like not the first photos we took. It's going to default and sort through uh, like the file name first, so al alphabetically or numerically. So once it's done, capture time order is now ready. I can hit continue. It is sorted by capture time. So it's in order of the actual session, um, I guess, if that makes sense. This is a really great feature, especially if you're doing weddings because, or you're like me, who when you do weddings, you shoot on two cameras. I have my dual camera strap and I shoot on two cameras when I do that. And so I have at least two cards. I shoot on four cards, but if we did it numerically, the entire day would be out of order because I don't use one, I, I primarily use one camera body, you know, maybe more during the day and kind of supplement it with my other camera body. Maybe I use, you know, one camera body with a certain lens all like the first half of the day and then the ceremony I use a different lens so I have that on my other camera body and I'm using that it's gonna all be in some crazy order so having it being able to be sorted by capture time is key for me because I can then see the story I'm creating especially with weddings and with family sessions too I don't want it in a crazy order I want all the photos that I took in one location to be together so that's what we have here Something that is super nice about Narrative Select that I really, really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into this photo. So you can see these like green and, or red or yellow. So here we have mid blink, great focus. So it tells you, you know, eyes fully open, perfect focus. 
eyes partially open, eyes partially open. So I can go through, and this is great for family photos on weddings and family photos here. I can go through, like I'm not going to choose this because clearly she's like mid blank. You can see she blinked, he blinked, everyone's blinking. Here everybody has their eyes open. So whenever I find a photo where everybody's eyes are open and I like the composition, it's a good photo, I want to choose it, I just hit T. So what it does here is it makes this check mark. So it's tagging the image. If I want to untag it, I can hit U and it untags or you can I guess reject the image, but I hit T, um, hit that little check mark. You can click it with your mouse here. So I'm gonna hit T because I want to tag this one. This is a cute one. So I'm gonna hit T, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to tag all the ones that I think are good. So one that, one thing to keep in mind is as you're going through all of this, sometimes when I have like a couple look down or I have families kind of look at each other, you know, maybe somebody's looking down at somebody. It does think that their eyes are closed, but you can kind of be the judge of that because you can also zoom in. So if I hit the space bar, I can zoom in on people or I can like click where I want to zoom in and really make sure that everybody is in focus and oops I'm hitting R <laughs> have I been hitting no I haven't been hitting R the whole time I've been hitting I need to hit T to tag everything it's nice that um, you can just ensure that everyone's in focus and looking um, where you're supposed to and knowing that everyone's eyes are open it makes it really easy so I can just I hit my arrow here I'm going through hitting tag Everybody is smiling at me. Now everybody's looking at each other. So you can see like the dad, he's looking at the mom here and his eyes are open. His eyes are clearly open. He's just looking down. So that is what I mean to just beware if not everybody's looking like right at the camera. I just finished going through and tagging all of the photos that I wanna keep. So now I'm going to come up on the top here where it says choose filters, you, sometimes it's like this, but if you expand it, you can see there are a lot of different filters to choose from. So what I'm gonna do is hit this check mark. So I'm gonna only show the tagged images. And you can see I have 158 tagged images out of 731 from the session. This is extremely typical for like a one hour family session. I do. I think over tag, <laughs> like I go through and I still end up deleting some while I'm editing and to me that's okay because I'm not going through 731 in my editing software and I do actually have a video, Ooh, I accidentally clicked something, I do actually have a video on my channel talking about why you should call your images before editing them so I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. But now that I've finished tagging all of the images here, I'm going to go ahead and hit ship. So here you can ship to a lot of different options. Lightroom Classic, Capture One, Photoshop, and then images with ratings. So you can choose like potential pics, unlikely, include undesirable pics, like, and also based on your star rating. I, again, I include tagged images only. So when I hit ship, it's going to default to only shipping the tagged images. So I'm going to go ahead and ship those. And you can see it's opening up Lightroom right now by itself. And up here it says add to album. Currently it says none. But I think I have one for their family. Either way, I can hit new create an album here and then go ahead and add and we're go already importing into Lightroom now so it makes it super easy and now I start the editing process so why do I like narrative select as a calling software I think that it's super easy to use 
if I'm being honest. I think if it's easy for me to use, it's easy for everybody to use. You know, you go through and you hit T and you just tag all the photos you want and then hit ship and it's in your Lightroom. It's in your editing software and it does seem to be compatible with a lot of different editing softwares as well. I'm not sure outside of Lightroom or really Adobe in general, so you'd have to double check. Another reason I really like narrative select as an option is they have a free plan so of course you can also select the pro plan which is very affordable 15 dollars a month um, but i do know these things kind of add up so with the free account you get up to four projects for free every single month so if you're only shooting four weddings a month you could use the free account there are some months where I shoot more sessions or weddings than other months, so I could kind of go back and forth and pay monthly. If you do pay monthly, it is $20 a month, but that might be more cost savings if you're going for, you know, having some months for free. I think the biggest thing for me is ease of use and the fact that I can use a free account because I've tried to use Photo Mechanic and I believe when I tried to use Photo Mechanic, which is a, a great option, I believe it was only like a free 30 day trial and then you have to pay. I'm not sure if there's a free account, let me look. Yeah, it seems like there you can try it for free, but if you want all the advanced features, you have to purchase it. And now it seems, again, based on what I'm looking at here, is you buy a license. It doesn't seem like it's the same like recurring per month software like narrative select is. I've definitely heard good things about Photo Mechanic and I've tried it myself and it is very easy to use as well, but I just like narrative select. I think there's a little bit more freedom in that. I like all the features that narrative select offers. I really, really enjoy it. Like I said, it is fairly inexpensive and there is also a free option and it links with Lightroom and I don't know. I just really like it. I think it's cut my editing time and like half because before I was putting all of my images in Lightroom and culling that way. I think Narrative makes it super easy to go through, cull your images, and ship them off to Lightroom, ready to edit. And like I said, this video is completely not sponsored. If you want to check them out for yourself, you can try. I mean, they have a free plan, so you can try the free plan, see if you like it, see if it works for you. This is how I use it, and I really enjoy it. But that's going to be it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye!